The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Where's the Gospel I sent you, my Father? When my youngest brother was engaged to be married, I tried to discourage him from going through with it. Our parents' marriage was a disaster, and I knew that he was filled with anger after their divorce and had not healed from the wounds caused by my father. My brother had become somewhat self-centered and arrogant and stopped practicing the faith. I foresaw that his marriage was going to fail, and in a loving, brotherly way, I tried to talk him out of it. His response was not unexpected. He was mad. After yelling at me, he proceeded to cut me out of his life. He got married outside of the church, and after 12 years, his wife divorced him. Without the love of God at the heart and center of his life and marriage, my brother, whose expression of love had turned inward, was not able to give his wife the life-giving love that her heart longed for. The first reading speaks to us about the importance of love of neighbor. The Father reminds us that we are not only to keep the first commandment to love God, but that we owe our entire existence to God's love. Love that frees us from the bondage of sin. A society steeped in moral relativism and radical individualism tries to convince us that evil is good. And we fool ourselves into believing, as long as I'm a good person, I'll still go to heaven, which is a lie. A society mired in a distorted sense of freedom says, I don't have to listen to the church because I can think for myself, which leads to spiritual bankruptcy. God calls us to be so much more. His love encourages us to put others first, especially those most in need of God's mercy and love. The elderly, the stranger, the poor, the unborn. The love that God has bestowed upon and within us. The love given to us by grace at the moment of our creation that makes us children of God obligates us to make this divine love known to our brothers and sisters by our words and our actions. St. Paul urges us to turn from idols and to serve the living and true God. We live in a culture that finds it easier to believe a lie than to live the truth, that embraces the 30-second soundbite as if it were divine revelation and rarely accepts the obligations of faith, lived in the light of truth, goodness, and beauty, with all that Jesus demands and expects of us. We worship at the altars of the so-called redefinition of marriage, 
Oh, and civil unions, by the way, let's be clear. Gender identity, euthanasia, assisted suicide, and ideological colonization. Paul tells us not to settle for the feel-good spirituality that kills the life of God within us. The love of God takes effect in our actions toward others. Just as God loves us in Christ, so a Christian's love must be generous and selfless. It must patiently endure the faults, weaknesses, and failings of those around us. Christ reveals the Father's love to us so that we can become living examples of Christ to others. A friend once asked me, Deacon, what are the most important priorities in your life? I said, my relationship with God, my family, then everything else after that. And he seemed surprised, and he said, I thought for sure you would put your family first. And I said, my friend, if I don't put God first in my life, I am no good to my wife and children. Jesus sets the record straight in no uncertain terms. Love of God before anything else, which is a response to the entire, of the entire person to God's total life-giving covenant. We are to love him with our mind, yes, but on a deeper level, with our whole heart and soul. When we love in this way, God will no longer be alien to me, and church teaching is not something imposed on me, but it actually frees me to become the person who God created me to be and acknowledge the truth that God is more deeply present to me than I am to myself. L let, let me say that again. When we love in the way God calls us to love, we become the person who God created us to be. And in becoming that person, we acknowledge the truth that God is more deeply present to me than I am to myself. The most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist establishes a communion of love and life between God and us. That's why the deepest form of intimacy we can have with God on this earth is when we dare to get up off those benches and walk toward this altar to receive the living and true God, body, blood, soul, divinity. You can't get closer to that than God on earth. The next time you'll be that close to God is when you're dead and you're standing before him for the particular judgment. On earth... It's the Eucharist. God gives himself freely and completely. And when we open our hearts to his love and mercy, when we make ourselves vulnerable before the giver of all gifts, when we are able to share with God the deepest parts of who we are without fear, then we are giving ourselves to him in return. Because it's when we give ourselves away in love is when we truly find ourselves in God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, love of neighbor is a path that leads to the encounter with God. And closing our eyes to our neighbor blinds us to God. Only my readiness to encounter my neighbor and to show him love makes me sensitive to God as well. Only if I serve my neighbor can my eyes be open to what God does for me and how much he truly loves me. Love should always lead to mutual respect, understanding, patience, and unselfishness. A few years back when I was visiting my sister when I was filming at EWTN, my brother was there. 
At dinner, I said to him, if I've said or done anything to hurt you over the years, even when we were kids, I want you to know that I'm sorry. I sincerely apologize for any pain that I may have caused you. And then I asked him for his forgiveness. After seeing that I was serious, he did forgive me. And eventually, he came back to the church. In fact, he's a daily mass goer now. Let us love one another, for love is of God. And he who loves is born of God and knows God. It is this love, not that we loved God, but that he first loved us. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. God is love. And he who lives in love lives in God. And God lives in him. Amen.